GMI Hub is accepting new songs for their 2023 Christmas compilation. To find out how to submit your song, go to www.gmihub.ca today. GMI Hub, Family Christmas, Volume 4. is the time to submit your original Christmas song. The Who Is You. If you're a songwriter and would love to be a part of our Christmas compilation project, then you're in the right place. Where can you submit? GMIHub.ca is the place. Please visit our website at GMIHub.ca and click on Family Christmas to find out how you can submit your song today. You could be a part of the GMI Hub Family Christmas Volume 4. Our special guest today is Vince Wright. Vince is the founder of the Berean Test. He's a lyrical analyst with a passion for apologetics, philosophy, logic, critical thinking, and of course, Jesus Christ. Vince, why don't you come and say hello to us? Well, Cheryl, thank you so much for having me here. Um, as you said, my uh, job with this website job, uh, maybe that's not the best way to put it, but uh, what I like to do is to critically examine popular Christian artists uh, by taking what they say in their lyrics and comparing them to scripture. Now, the Berean Test, that name comes from the book of Acts, chapter 17, where uh, Luke tells us that there is this group of people called the Bereans who were much better than um, uh, other people who were around them. Uh, they were more no minded than the Thessalonians because they had taken what the scripture says and to compare it to what Paul was saying to see if what Paul was telling them was the truth. And so I take that concept of comparing things to scripture and use it when it comes to song lyrics, taking what the artists say in their songs and comparing it to scripture to see if what they're saying is biblically accurate. Now, song lyrics, um, Excuse me. Um, the uh, scripture analysis is not the only thing that I look at when it comes to examining a song. I also look at the message to see what it is that the artist is telling us. Uh, and I'm also interested in what unbelievers have to say in terms of how they interpret this. And usually my test for that is by thinking about the song. They know nothing about the artist, is my assumption. Uh, they know nothing about the history of the artist, what kind of music that they put out there, and they hear this at Walmart. What would an unbeliever think? And so that's some other things that I discussed in my reviews. That is wonderful. You know, and, and I know, as I was saying before we did this recording, it is, it, this is so paramount. What you do is so paramount because there are still, like we have a lot of new artists that are coming on board to share their music and, and they're newly writing songs as well. But there are also artists that have been doing this for years and years and years. And one of the things that I've heard from these, I'll say more established artists is sometimes they have a concern like is the new music actually aligning with scripture is it is or is it just fluff is it actually sharing meat so we're going to be like it's going to be so interesting to hear how you go through this but before i do can you break down the specifics of the areas that you look at now you mentioned you look at the lyrics but is there anything like even when you look at the lyrics what exactly are the different things that you look at as you look at the lyrics uh, that's a great question, and it's not just the artists who are asking these questions. It's also worship leaders and pastors uh, and some congregants as well who are also asking, wait a minute, are these things really biblical? And so sometimes I'll get questions and emails, uh, and I'll get comments as well from these people that would uh, let me know 
uh, what they think about such things. So uh, to your question, one of the things that I look at, um, well, as I mentioned, I, I do look at the message and unbelievers uh, interpretation, but I, I also, um, some people have asked me about my thoughts on whether or not I recommend a, uh, a, these songs for corporate worship. Um, and there's a couple of things that I look at when it comes to that aspect of it. For example, uh, does this song proclaim God's value and worth, because there's some songs out there that are inspirational, they call us to do and believe things, but they're not necessarily focused on praising God, which is fine, but that, but that doesn't, but if they're not focused on that, then I don't think that they're very appropriate for corporate worship. Um, also, is the music style palatable to the ears of its listeners? Uh, most people don't want to hear stuff that's heavy metal, country rap, or stuff like that in worship music. That doesn't mean that there aren't people who would like to hear those things, um, but for the most part, uh, it's it's more like contemporary gospel, uh, sometimes pop sort of music um, when it comes to corporate worship, and and also hymns as well. Uh, also, does the song contain theological errors? Uh, that's what I do on my brand tests. I look to see if the songs are biblically accurate. Um, and also, is the song clear? So I won't recommend songs that where they sound. Like I could take this song and I could play it in, like I said, Walmart, or I can go to a, a secular concert and I hear these lyrics and I think, oh, this is about a woman when it's really supposed to be about Jesus. And it's not very clear in terms of what the song is telling me. Uh, so if it's not very clear, I don't think it's necessarily appropriate for corporate worship. Uh, some people will disagree with me on that particular point, um, but that's what I believe. Uh, finally, there's also the theological depth rating. Uh, I just added this either, I think it was late last year or earlier this year, somewhere around there. Um, but I've added a, either, it's either milk, mixed, or meat, depending upon uh, how theological deep the song is. So some milk songs, they don't talk about foundational truths, that it, it might be just a very simple prayer or they'll just have a, a basic list of God's attributes. Uh, things that are a little bit more meaty would, would be like a deep dive into a foundational truth. It might plumb the depths of a single topic, or, or it might be like a very advanced uh, or elaborate explanation of God's laws and commandments. So those are some other things I look at. Oh, wow. Okay. I was going to ask you if you have a scale on each of these points, because I was just going to say, do you have like a scale of a scale of one to 10, but I like the milk, meat, and uh, mixed <laughs> version. So whether or not you want a meal with this song or whether you just want to have a nice little inspirational drink here or a little refresher, here's the song for you. This is awesome. Okay. I love the fact that, that you also, like worship leaders, like if you're paying attention to this, this is awesome because um, I actually didn't think of that. Like when I was when I was listening to feedback from people, it's just people that are songwriters, but it does make sense that churches would want to know, are, is this song biblically sound? So you must have a lot of churches on your list, so like really wanting to know from you. It's like, like uh, you're, that's valuable information. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I do get a lot of feedback from uh, from people though. Most of it is is gratitude, just thanking me for the the, the stuff that I put out there. Um, it's helped them to think more about okay, well, is this song really biblically accurate uh, or not? And it's also helped other people to uh, change their um, their their worship sets. So they'll look at my site and they'll say, okay, well, Vince has a point here. So, so we're not going to do that song anymore because of some of the things that Vince has said. So uh, I do get some of that as well. Um, as far as this, the, the scoring, uh, there is a scoring system for the brand test. Uh, the, the, the four main aspects that I look at, the song's message, uh, how much it lines up with scripture, uh, the, the outsider test or, or the unbeliever uh, interpretation and also what does the song glorify? I uh, either glorifies God or it doesn't. Um, so the degree that it does that um, would, would also determine how 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 much of a, a score that it gets. Uh, ratings are from zero to ten for all of them. They're all whole numbers. Uh, and then I uh, for the for the biblical accuracy section too. Uh, that one gets twice as much weight as anything else. So it's like a 20, 40, 20, 20 percentage. Uh, and then I you know. Do the math, and then and then I um, I round to the nearest half 
a point, and then that becomes the rating for that. For the um, recommendation for corporate worship, uh, that one, the, the four options are yes, perhaps, no, and other. And, and others, uh, that, that could be for songs that are, that are inspirational, not necessarily corporate worship, uh, but someone still might want to uh, be inspired like during part of the worship service to, uh, to, to hear something inspiring. So, so there might be some possible use for something like that during a corporate worship set. Um, and then, uh, as I had mentioned for the theological depth rating, uh, you have meat and uh, milk and meat, uh, but then there's a third one called mix, which is sort of a, an intermixing between the, the, the milk and the meat. Oh, okay. Awesome. Okay, so we need to actively go through this with you. Okay, so I know that uh, we shared some songs with you, and I'm just curious as we go through this each step, as um, what your thoughts are, just just to help us go through what the how the Brian test works and what ratings you would give them. So, um, one of the songs we sent is a song from a Canadian artist by the name of Alan Froes, and he wrote the song called Holy. Um, what were your thoughts on that particular song uh, in terms of the lyrics? And, well, actually, what were your thoughts? Like, where, where do you want to start here? <laughs> yeah, it's a great question. So um, usually what I'll do when it comes to doing a brand test is I would look at section two first because once I've gone through it, um, scripturally, that's going to inform me about everything else. Um, all right, so I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and, and read through it and, uh, and comment on it as I read through this. Uh, so the, the particular lyrics I'm looking at right now, uh, it doesn't have verses on it, so I'm just going to refer to it based on its paragraph number um, as stanzas. So the first stanza starts with, uh, maker of the universe, we breathe because of you. So that's talking about our dependence on God. Um, so we – so this is this like that Genesis 1 – uh, God breathed into into man. He became a living soul. Um, it also Genesis one also has God, you know, created the heavens and the earth. Um, so I would bring some of that into here. Uh, so the next one is you are powerful and great in everything you do. So again, that's that's talking about God's as creator. It's talking about Him as as power. There's plenty of scripture that talks about that. Uh, here we stand in all of you. We worship you alone. So now we're talking about um, Exodus twenty. Uh, God's commandment to um, to not have any of the gods before me, and and there, uh, and it also has our independence, or excuse me, our inner interdependence of God, um, that that here here's Him, and and we're just so all inspired by Him, uh, joining in the endless song that that rises in, or excuse me. Joining in the endless song that rises to your throne. So now we're talking about not just me, but also other believers that are joined together worshiping God. Uh, and then the next section here, uh, stanza two, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. That comes from Revelation. Uh, that's what the angels sing. Who was and is and is to come. It's part of that as well. Uh, nothing compares to your glory. You are holy, holy. Um, so, so now God is um, incomparable. There's lots, a lot of scripture that talks about that. Uh, so, so far, so good. Um, so far, this is this is going to get a ten for Bible. Uh, in your presence, we feel the weight of all our sins. So now we're we shifted from 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 God to to ourselves, and now we're talking about how we've messed up, how we violated the law of God. And there's lots, lots of again, lots of scripture on that as well. Uh, I don't have any specific examples in my head, be and, and part of the reason for that is is because when I do these reviews, uh, I have a huge list of different topics that has all kinds of scripture on those specific topics, and uh, I ended up when, – when I see stuff like, like this, um, for example, uh, here at the beginning where we had maker of the universe, so I would have something on my list that, that would say um, some to the effect of – uh, God is sovereign, um, and then and then I have a whole bunch of scripture underneath for that, and I would just copy and paste that into the review. Um, but I haven't had a chance to to really memorize a lot of the scripture um, mm -hmm. because of a lot of copy and pasting. But right. um, yeah, and that's it, it takes time to do that, and I just haven't taken the time to do that. So um, forgive me for not quoting uh, from scriptures on some of these things. 
Uh, all right, so let's see. We were at stanza three. In your presence, we feel the weight of our sin. Uh, though we've trampled on your heart, still you invite us in. So now we're now we're talking about um, you know John three sixteen, uh, sort of sort of language here. Um, we've are, are actually not just John three sixteen, but also Romans five six through eight, uh, which is which is talking about uh, Jesus. He um, he came down and he paid the penalty for our law breaking while we were yet sinners. He died for us, and and that's how he shows his love for us. So that's what I see when when I when I um, I see this. It's also us being very honest to to, to God about um, about our sinful state and um, and that he's the one inviting us us in, and, and and you know there's nothing really in us that's that's going to bring us to him. Uh, so now. Uh, the next part line says, now we run in confidence towards your throne of grace because of the blood of Christ has made for us a way. So now this is acknowledging that it is Jesus' blood that makes forgiveness of sins possible. And through his sacrifice, now we are confident that we can go before his throne and we can make our petitions before him. Uh, again, so far so good. Blessing, honor, glory, power. To our King, who reigns on high Jesus. Uh, again, that's from Revelation, um, and it, and that line repeats. The last stanza says, "Age to age, you never change. You're righteous, just, and true." So we have God that never changes, and a couple of attributes that are um, from the Bible: righteousness, justice, and truth are, are all attributes attributed to, to God, um, and also to Jesus as well. Uh, we could search eternity and find there's none like you. So again, this is talking about the uniqueness of God uh, dwelling in the highest place. You reign forevermore. So now we're talking about God as a ruler coming down. Um, we're not coming down, but but ruling from on high um, and, and us as his servants. Uh, one day all the world will bow and confess that you are Lord. So that's talking about. Um, every name will bow and confess that Jesus is Lord. All right, so now I've gone through all the lyrics, and, and so I would have all the scripture that has all of these different um, aspects of God. Uh, almost all the entire song here, as I, um, as I look at it, is attributes of God. Uh, so I would put that in section one that, they, that I, would, I would most likely, for review, I would probably say uh, some to the effect of the God is, and then we'll put a colon, and then I would just list all the attributes because that's that's pretty much what what's here. Uh, and then after that, uh, there would be some sort of sentence about, um, uh, you know, that that we acknowledge our law breaking, we acknowledge our our guilt, um, and and we uh, and we thank God for a sacrifice. So um, so it would be ten ten um, unbeliever interpretation. I don't really see anything here that that they would. Um, maybe the word sin, um, because that's from believers. Usually they think of that word as mistakes and not breaking the law of God. So that might be – I might ding a point on that um, just because they, you know, they're they're not likely to understand that, that word just by hearing the word. Um, that's something that does have to be explained just a little bit for unbelievers in my opinion. Uh, and then, you know, what does the song glorify? Obviously, it glorifies Jesus. So that's that would get a ten. So this whole song would get a nine and a half. Oh wow! <laughs> uh, would this and this would be good for corporate worship, I presume, based on that yes. score. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Corporate worship. Um, probably. I think this is more of a milk song, though. Uh, I don't. Yeah. I, it 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 does talk about the basics, but I don't think it goes any deeper than that. So I would say it's milk right. theology. It's basically the almost like the, good for the seeker, uh, you know, because you, you mentioned John three sixteen, which is kind of known to the saved and almost the unsaved as well, right? Kind of idea, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, interesting, very very interesting. So no issues outside of of uh, you know, just is it is it understandable by the non believer kind of idea but if it if the song was meant for corporate worship then it, it totally is doing that it's it's totally in line so churches who if they want to take that song and sing that as part of their corporate worship you'd say definitely there would be no issues with that yep i'd recommend this one awesome awesome okay okay we got to do another one this is so cool okay so the next one the lord's prayer 
Uh, and this one is uh, actually the Lord's Prayer. It's yours by Matt Mahar. Or Maher. <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? I kind of think I know what it's going to be. But again, uh, you start basically with the scripture, right? You start with section mm -hmm. two. So section two is looking at, is it biblically sound? So let's start there. Right. Yeah, let's do that. All right. So the lyrics that I'm looking at, this is, I, I usually go to Genius, but um, because that's sort of a universal place for, for although they're not necessarily 100% correct. So I always have to um, compare the lyrics by, by hearing the audio on it to, to make sure that whoever um, contributed the song lyrics did so accurately. Um, right. So I'm assuming that, that it's that it's done accurately. Um, anyways, it, it starts, and this one had, does, happens to have sections. So intro starts with hey, oh, hey, oh, mm -hmm. hey, oh. So I would probably oh. put a little bit of fun in that. Uh, I, I would probably say uh, something along the lines of uh, the thing that horses eat followed by uh, <laughs> uh, a reference to, to Casper the Friendly Ghost. Ooh, yeah, kind of <laughs> so that's that's probably how it would start that section you know just because i like to have a little bit of fun but i wouldn't take any points away for that um i, no. I like to poke a little bit of fun at those at those you know filler kind of words hey oh yeah yes uh things like that so um yeah i'll have a little bit of fun with intro all right moving on okay. uh ver <laughs> verse so this one looks like it only has one verse. Um, <laughs> uh, Father, let your kingdom come. Um, Father, let your will be done on earth that is in heaven. So that's talking. Okay, so that's this is definitely the Lord's prayer. The title is correct. It's accurate. This is exactly as it is written. The Lord's prayer. Your kingdom, but it's not. It didn't start with um, "Hallow be your name." Um, which is fine. It doesn't necessarily have to start there, um, but it does. It does directly quote from um, from the Lord's Prayer on here, uh, right here in my heart. So now, Mahar has made this personal. So, um, so he's so so the kingdom come, your will be done is is something that Mahar is saying that he has accepted in his heart. He's actually going to uh, live his life this way. So it's sort of a, a um, all right. Let me let me take a, take a step back a, a little bit here. One of the things that I do look for uh, and look at is a call to action. Is there something in the lyrics that tells us to do something? And um, I I don't know if right here in my heart is really necessarily telling us to do something, but it's um, it, it might possibly lead me into a certain direction. Let's let's just take a look at the rest of the lyrics and see if it, it tells us anything about that. Um, all right. So after that, it says, Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done on earth as in heaven right here in my heart. So that's a repeat. Chorus. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us. Forgive us. As we forgive the ones who sin against us. Forgive them. Again, again, that's from the Lord's Prayer. And we do have a call to action. Mahar is telling us to forgive as we have been forgiven. He's telling us to do that, and so we should. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Let your kingdom come. So um, again, Lord's Prayer, and uh, let your kingdom come. That's the first part uh, of, her, of the verse. So after that, verse repeats in the chorus. Um, bridge after comes after that. It's yours. It's yours. All yours, all yours, the kingdom, the power, the glory, all yours. Uh, so that's a, that's a repeated idea. It's just, just uh, kind of loosely expanding upon it, not really saying anything new, but just kind of you know expanding it just a little bit and, and just with a little bit of different words, but not really that much. Um, all yours, all yours, forever and ever, the kingdom of yours. Um, and then it, um, the rest of the lyrics are, are pretty much just like that, uh, and, you know. Uh, it does say the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours specifically, but it's the same idea as before. Uh, repeat, and then verse repeats again, and then outro is the final section. On earth as in heaven, right here in my heart. So that's, again, that's that's part of verse. So, yeah, this song's a 10. 
in terms of biblical accuracy, I didn't see anything wrong with it. Um, it directly quotes from the Lord's Prayer. Uh, that's what the message would basically be. Is if there might be one or two sentences on that. Uh, unbelievers will easily recognize this. That would get a 10. Uh, obviously, it glorifies God. It's, it's about the kingdom. It's about him. Um, so the, the whole song would get a 10 out of 10 when it comes to the the, 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 the core of the uh, the review. Um, definitely milk. Um, it's just quoting from the Lord's Prayer, which is very familiar to people, very basic lyrics here. Uh, would I recommend it for corporate worship? I would. And, and I think I would because this song is primarily focused on God and his kingdom and his glory. Um, right. So, so I would say, I would say that this song is appropriate for corporate worship as well. And I think they should get an 11 for, for the extra hey oh hey oh's in there <laughs> for, <laughs> for the non-believer <laughs> just to capture them. <laughs> and I'll definitely get their attention. Yes, because it's easy, right? Because that's one thing that we've always, well, my husband and I talk about is sometimes is a song repeatable or easy to catch on to. And sometimes having those hey -os or you know, yeah, yeah, yes gets people just because it's easy, you know? And especially when, you know, um, you, you see it probably in the U.S. as well, but in Canada, a lot of the churches have uh, people from other countries with other languages as their first language, not English as their first language. So... Being able to say hey and hallelujah and oh is, is easier on them to catch on to. So that's why I said you should get 11 just for fun. <laughs> wow. Okay. So we've had two songs that basically from your breakdown have are, are really highly recommended for church worship, right? The, both Holy and the Lord's Prayer strong in the biblical, uh, in, in alignment with the biblical accuracy. Um, strong with, uh, I guess, being simple enough uh, uh, in terms of its milk, right? Simple enough to capture, doesn't go into anything too deep, but pretty much anyone could capture on to capture the message and easily enter into worship with these particular songs. And churches could be very uh, comfortable, like worship leaders could be very comfortable in applying or allowing these songs to be in their uh, worship set, right? So Correct. let's talk about, okay, so let's talk about the next song, Better Than a Hallelujah by Amy Grant. Let's go through that song and let's see what your thoughts are on that. Yes. Okay. Um, this one, again, has, um, it does have a structure. Not all songs have a, have a, a, a structure, so it's a little bit easier to do these reviews when they have one. Um, mm -hmm. So this one happens to to have that you know verse, chorus, bridge because I can it makes it just a little bit easier for me to refer to different sections. So glad that this one has it. All right, first one, God loves a lullaby in in a mother's tears in, in the dread of night. Um, I I started thinking about what the word lullaby means. So mm -hmm. um, we go to Merriam-Webster on that particular word. Merriam-Webster defines that as a song to quiet children, um, or to lull them, to, or, or to lull them, lull them to sleep. Um, right. Now, I don't know about you, but when I hear a mother's tears in the dread of night, that doesn't sound to me like a quiet children's song that lulls them to sleep. So mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure if lullaby is necessarily the best word to choose here. Mm -hmm. um, I think I understand what Grant is trying to communicate to us. I think she's saying that the um, – and, and this is something that I've, I've really learned a lot from reading the Psalms – is that what God wants from us when we talk to him, when, we're, when we spend time in prayer, what he wants from us is complete and brutal honesty with him. And that's what I'm seeing here uh, in a mother's tears in the dread of night. She's uh, – I, I picture the mother as beside her bed um, just just wallowing in, uh, in her tears uh, mm. it, towards God, just, just telling him about what's going on in her life. Uh, and, and that's pleasing to God's ears because she's being honest with him. Uh, I just 
I, I think that lullaby is just a, a – it just takes it just a little too far. Um, yeah, is maybe it, God – like an ironic you? Almost an irony. Uh, I, I don't – well, I, I guess some people could take that as an irony. Um, maybe we could look at some of the other verses to see if, if other um, lyrics would – um, would grant that as a as a good or or even a, a great explanation for uh, for lullaby. Um, it could be figurative. I, I I'm willing to, to grant there might be some aspect of it that's that's that it's using the the lullaby in a in a figurative manner. But you know when I when I hear that it just it just doesn't sound like the best word to me. Um, the next lyric says better than a hallelujah sometimes initially my reaction to this it was uh no and and i went uh no because hallelujah what that word means is it is to praise to joyfully praise god in song and the question i asked myself is what could be better than praising God in song. But then I started thinking more about the being honest that I had talked about earlier that I had learned from the Psalms. And I started thinking, well, I may not necessarily be in a state where I could joyfully praise God in song. And so in that particular moment where if I was a mother who had tears in the dread of night beside that bedside, wallowing to God about all my issues, that's not necessarily the best time. It's not an appropriate time for me to be joyfully praising God in song. And so I think that when she says, and by she I mean Amy Grant, uh, when Amy Grant says better than a hallelujah sometimes, I actually think that she's right in that particular moment. It, it, it's actually appropriate and it makes sense for uh, for her to be – Doing that as opposed to joyfully praising God. So I think I think uh, Amy Grant's on to something that's that's uh, that's actually pretty deep here. Mm. Verse two, God loves the drunkard's cry. Uh, again, being completely honest, the drunkard mm. being completely honest about his state. The soldiers plead not to let him die. Better than Hallelujah sometimes. So it's a lot of the same idea but just different examples uh chorus says we pour out our miseries god just hears a melody all right so here at this point i'm gonna have to put a pause on it and then, okay let, what does the word melody mean so let me look that up real quick so melody if i look at merriam webster um melody defined by Mary Webster is a sweet or agreeable succession or arrangement of sounds. Another definition is a rhythmic succession of single tones organized in an aesthetic whole. So, so what I get from this is that it's enjoyable. Um, and there, there's some sort of, uh, agreement of sounds. So that's what a melody is, mm -hmm. um, as Mary Webster has defined it. So when, we pour out our miseries. God hears a pleasant sound. Um, I think that jives with me a little bit better than the word lullaby, um, because I, I, I can't remember exactly, but I do recall. I think there was at least one or two scriptures that that had said something to the effect of um, that that God uh, takes pleasure, um, uh, you know, when we when we share our um, share ourselves, share our lives with him. Uh, I can't remember exactly where that is. Um, but I think, I think it's, it's, it's playing to that particular aspect of, um, God enjoying us. Um, not necessarily enjoying the sense that he's like, Oh, this is great that they're in misery. Not, not in that sense, but, but really more of a, that we're including him sort of sense. So I think, I think melody might, might be a, a good, good word here for, for that particular idea. Um, all right, so to continue, beautiful, the mess we are, um, that's from God's perspective. We know what we are. Jeremiah 17, 9 tells us that the human heart is deceitful above all of the things and is desperately wicked. So it's not from our perspective, it's from God's. So he thinks we're beautiful. Um, the honest cries of a broken, of, of breaking heart, so there's that honesty I talked about earlier, uh, are better than a hallelujah. 
Uh, it's again, same idea uh, that I had to talked about in verse one, the woman holding on for life, the dying man giving up the fight. This is verse three uh, are better than a hallelujah sometimes. So again, um, same idea, different examples. Verse four, the tears of shame for what's been done, the silence when the words won't come. So that is talking about the Holy Spirit interceding for us when, uh, when, 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 when we have no words to speak. Um, are better than a hallelujah sometimes. So again, um, different words, same idea. Chorus comes after that. Uh, bridge. So I guess this would be, oh no, it's just one bridge. Okay, I thought there was a second bridge here. Better than a church bell ringing. Um, better than a choir singing out, singing out. Um, again, I think it's the same idea that I had discussed in verse one about how it, it, it would be better and appropriate for us to be honest about how we're feeling than to um, than to fake joy when we're not really feeling mm -hmm. joyful. Uh, chorus, chorus, and then outro, better than a hallelujah sometimes, better than a hallelujah, better than a hallelujah sometimes. All right. Um, so this particular song, um, I would probably um, ding one point for the lullaby. Um, it's not a big okay. issue. It's a, it's a minor thing that, that I would that I would um, say that that's probably not the best expression of um, from God's perspective, hearing a mother's tear in the dread of night, that it's a, a soothing um, uh, song to put a child to sleep. So I'd probably ding a point for that. So I get a nine. Uh, for that uh, message, uh, I've already talked about a lot of the things that are in the message. So, um, so the, the main idea here is is, is that uh, is that we, we we need to be completely, totally, and honest with God about how we're feeling. Uh, and sometimes it's just better for us to just cry to God for help and and be be with Him in tears than to uh, than to fake joy when when we're not feeling joyful. Um, so I think that that's a pretty good summary of this of this song. And um, but I would I, again uh, have a minor criticism about Lullaby for the reasons that I've shared. So that song that section would also get a nine. Um, I think this is pretty easy for unbelievers to understand. I don't really see anything here that they would misconstrue or misunderstand. Um, so, uh, but again, I would probably mention something about that Lullaby here as well. Um, that that's probably not the best way of describing um, God's um, about, about God hearing our honest cries for help. So um, so that section would get a nine. And then uh, does the song glorify God? Yes, except for the lullaby part. So that would get a nine. So the whole song we get a nine out of ten. Um, what I recommend this for corporate worship. Uh, I I don't think that this is. I mean, this is this is definitely descriptive. Uh, there is a call to action. Uh, it's calling us to be honest with God about what we're feeling. But I don't, and it could possibly be a song that somebody could use that's inspirational. That it, it might help somebody to think that I can do this. I can be honest. Uh, I don't have to, you know, be just happy clappy all the time. Uh, it's okay to be sad sometimes. So that that might be helpful during a church service for people to hear that, but I don't think that this is a corporate worship song. So I would I would definitely if 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 I were to give it a rating at all, I would I'd probably put it in the other that other category. Um it could it could potentially um and it's definitely uh, at least mixed when it comes to theological depth because there's definitely a lot more going on here than just basic um but I don't I don't know if I would necessarily say that this is a meat song. Um, there's a couple of in, there's basically just one good idea that gets repeated over and over just in different ways. So so I wouldn't say it's meaty, but it, but I would I would say that there's there's a little bit of meat mixed with some some of um, some milk in there. Um, so that's how I would write this song. Okay. And as you were reading those lyrics, I was thinking. You know, um, I, I try to think of when, when songwriters write songs, I'm wondering, I don't know if this is her testimony at all, um, but it, uh, by the different examples that she was bringing in through the song, it, it's obviously people that are not living or they're not experiencing the perfect high in life. And, and I guess what she's, it, it sounded like what she was trying to capture was there are people that you may identify with this as 
they're not having the perfect high in life. There's a mother that's going through some problems. There's the drunkard that's on the street. There's this, you know, all this negative stuff happening. But even though they're in those states, they can still look to God, praise God. You know, they can, they can still kind of turn their direction to God. Um, and he'd be happy to hear them. That's kind of the impression I was getting. Now I get your get what you're saying about the lullaby because I I would think of a soothing lullaby, and I think of a mother kind of, you know, cradling her little one, and you know, watching the little chubby cheeks and holding the little hand and singing, you know, how sweet you are, kind of, you know, and not hi, no, oh, rockabye baby, life is really bad, da 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 da, you know, kind of idea, you know, <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't think, I don't think that's what, what, what Amy's trying to say. I think she's trying to, you know, say you're trying to soothe the baby, but at the same time, you know, you're going through a rough time in life. And so I, I hear what you're saying though, like it, it could be so easily misconstrued, you know, Similar to like, a, I think a parallel passion that I have as well is the communication side. What is the message and is the message, um, does it make sense and can it easily be interpreted or misinterpreted? And so I, I totally align with what you're saying. You know, like someone can listen to lullaby and go, I don't think it's pretty sweet to be singing about, hi, life really is bad, <laughs> you know, kind of to your kid, but, but, you know, I also can see the picture of a mother struggling to sing a lullaby that is supposed to say, this child, you are born, you're a blessing, and you're wonderful, even though I'm going through this horrid situation of whatever that situation is, you know? So, so but it is interesting to hear this and, um, and, uh, and, and hear what is it biblically sound or not. And, and I love what you said about the Psalms. It's true. David, who wrote most of the Psalms, and I think some of the other psalmists that are in there, literally wrote out of their pain in some cases. You know, when David was running away from his son Absalom or running away from Saul, and, and even when he messed up, like he, he orchestrated a murder, he stole a person's wife, so to speak, right? And even when he messed up, he still had a psalm that said, you know, I messed up, you know, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit in me, you know. And when, um, when, when enemies were after him, he was, sometimes he was so passionate, you know. It's kind of like, these enemies, do I, do I um, like what they're doing? No, God, slew them and, you know, knock them over, do this, you know. He was like really, really passionate about like you know, knock them out and you know get rid of them and at the same time he go but god you are sovereign and i know that you are more merciful than i am <laughs> and you're full of grace and you know he'd, he'd get it out of his system but then at the same time he'd recognize no but you're god if i were god i would knock these people out but you are god you are more sovereign you are full of grace and God, you deal with them the way you would want to deal with them. And, and I still remember again, David with his, uh, when he knew he did wrong and the prophet said, you know, this is what you did. You know, you took the one little lamb away from this man. You took the man, you took his wife, you took everything he had, um, even though you have so much more and this is your result, you're going to lose your son. And even when David fasted and prayed and pleaded and said, you know, God, maybe you'll change your mind, but God didn't change his mind. He did end up taking the life of the son. And even though the servants didn't understand why after the son died, David said, okay, I guess I better just, you know, get dressed and eat again. And they didn't understand that, but it was because he knew God was sovereign. And if this was the punishment for the wrong that he did, he, he already prepared his heart to say, I'll accept that. I'll take it. <laughs> if that's what if that's what it'll take, I'll take that if that is your way, God, of dealing with me, because you will deal with me more mercifully, you know, full of grace compared to another human who would do worse, <laughs> right? So but I love you, your rendition. I love how you how you break all this down. Now, we have songwriters that will be watching this episode. So for people who are writing songs, we have new and emerging artists that are venturing into songwriting and releasing music. What would your advice be to them as they are writing songs 
especially if they're writing songs for church corporate worship um, uh, usage what would be your song what song what would be your song what would be your advice for them as they're writing songs <laughs> you can What's sing a song, song too if you want mm. <laughs> uh, i'm not going to do that today uh cheryl that's a great question so i think there are two things that i would have uh say to artists one is that they should take their lyrics and they should run them by somebody who is a lot more seasoned in the words than they are. And I'm not necessarily talking about worship leaders or other artists, um, although it can certainly include uh, worship leaders and artists. But I'm I'm also thinking about pastors, scholars, um, people like that, that, that really have years and years and years of um, experience and training in the word and have somebody like that to examine the lyrics to see, okay, well, are those lyrics really biblical? So kind of have them do what I'm doing um, just with somebody who is um, – very very seasoned um at uh at the word the other thing that i would say is that artists should be a little bit more clear about who they're talking about some of the reviews that i've done um i'll use draw me close to you uh, by kelly carpenter as an example so if you look at the lyrics of that um you know say draw me close to you never let me go i lay it all down again um just to see here, my friend. But in, in, in a, when I looked at these lyrics and I did this review, the only word that I saw that was possibly a reference to God, um, that uh, was just the word you. It was just a pronoun. Well, those lyrics could also apply to uh, – a secular concert, they could take these lyrics and they, and they can play these lyrics and people will think it's probably about a woman and not about God. So what these artists should do is they should be a little bit more clear about who they're talking about. They're going to use the word you uh, all over the place. What better word is there than the word Jesus? He's, he's the one who's our savior. He's our Lord. Uh, he paid the penalty for our law-breaking. Why not use the word Jesus? We're talking about him. We're talking to him. So why are we not using that word? I don't I don't quite understand why some artists are are, are just not using the word Jesus. Um mm. so so we should definitely do that a lot more. Right. I know part of it is they're probably thinking about uh they're fitting the word into the melody or something like that. So, but so even if it's not draw me close to you, draw me close to you, Lord, or something like that, like bringing that in, even if it's a little afterward, but it's making it clear you meaning you, Jesus, or you meaning you, Lord, kind of ideas. What yeah. are you thinking? Lord would be fine. Um, I, I don't, I don't think very many people would think that that's not talking about a, the Christian God when, um, whenever a song talks about, lord or or even in uh the lord would 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 maybe a better way of um of of running because mm -hmm. it's not just any lord it's the lord so right, um, right. so that that would certainly be acceptable mm -hmm. you guys a good point because now i didn't realize this but there are more people actually being named lord <laughs> like as, as a it's like hi my name's john hi my name's lord like that's pretty much how that that's coming across now so you raise a good point to say the lord uh to make it clear so 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 make it clear who they're communicating to and making sure that their music aligns with the scripture and the best way to know that for sure is double check that with someone else who is seasoned in the scripture as well. Someone they trust and someone that they can accept the feedback from and, and rework their music accordingly. So now for people who are writing songs that they're the Christian focus may be more on the inspirational side, I guess, or, or it's not necessarily for churches to sing, but yet it's to encourage the Christian body. Any, any additional advice that you would give them? 
Um, you're talking about – are you talking about worship leaders necessarily, or are you talking about other, other sorts of leaders? This would be now – other sorts. So there's the worship leaders that, that may be worship leaders or songwriters that may be writing songs in the church for the church to sing, right? And then there are others that are writing songs maybe for radio. Like they want to put it, okay. they want their song on Christian radio. And right. it's like a Lauren Daigle, for example. You got it. You got it. Yeah, right. Okay. So, so inspirational. Any, any okay. addition? Yes. So any additional advice you would give them? Yeah, um, I I would say certainly the first point would would, would definitely be the um, something that they should de uh, to do. They should they should make sure that what they're writing is biblically accurate. Um, the second point doesn't necessarily apply to them because they're writing something that's inspirational, which um, <clears throat> does not necessarily have to word Jesus in it or or God. I'm I'm thinking of um, of the song Million Dollar Man by Cutlass. Uh, as a primary okay. example of that, because that song is primarily focused on uh, the pleasures of this life and somebody who thought that the grass was greener on the other side. And so they they went for it. They became a millionaire. They have all these things, but they were found wanting because mm -hmm. um, and, and then what they had, they had a they had a beautiful you know life with a wife and stuff like all that is gone because they chased after money and fame and uh, and fortune. Um, and, and selfish pursuit. And, and because they did that, um, they, they lost what um, they had lost something that, that they now want and can't have because of, because of what they had pursued. So um, yeah, we definitely, we, we need songs that are like that um, in the, in the secular sphere. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else other than that. Um, I I can't really think. Well, I, the only other thing I can think of is is maybe to avoid uh, certain topics, maybe possibly um, that are you know a little bit raunchier. I would say, and maybe mm -hmm. uh, unless it could be done in a tasteful way, because there's so many songs out there that uh, <laughs> that are about. Yeah. Um, yeah, then they're not they're not good. So so don't do that. Right, keep it keep it family friendly, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> yeah, PG. PG, keep it PG. Awesome. Yeah, that's not to say that's not to say, say that you can't be honest about things. I do enjoy even some of the PG thirteen sort of lyrics. What I mean by that is, uh, somebody maybe like like a rap artist, for example, they could talk about how they 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 chased after women, they chased after they chased after drugs, and and they may even go into a little bit of detail about what those drugs are and what the experience was like. Um, and then they would say, okay, but all all of that was wrong. Uh, all of that was, um, you know, it it made me feel this way, and I and it, and this happened to me because I chose to do this, and so the 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 call to action in that particular case is don't do what I did. Uh, so that's, right. that's, that's a little bit more PG 13 area. Uh, but I would say mm -hmm. that, that songs like that should be written because there are people who are experiencing mm -hmm. these things and, and it's good for them to hear a different message than what's being put out there. Yeah, I guess it's all about the relevancy and that's where the testimony comes in. Cause the Bible does talk about that, right? Like you defeat the enemy by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. So whether that word is in rap or whether that word is in song, um, it's still a way of being relevant, taking the word and being relevant, right? Uh, to today, right? So yeah, I totally agree with that. Well, this has been very educational and it's always so fun. Like I still want to know where the, Oh yes, come in. Now I want to know where the oohs, ahs, and the oh yes come in. <laughs> what are we gonna do with those? <laughs> so all of the inspirational add a little oh, for 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 all the uh, the Christian songs that are supposed to be used for the church. They can add a little few more oohs and ahs and oh yes, just to make sure the congregation catches on. <laughs> I mean, if that's what they want to do, that's that's fine with me. I I will poke fun at it, but but that's that's you know that's fine. That's totally fine. <laughs> you gotta include the audience. Well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> well, 
Vince, this has been absolutely educational, and I love I love how you how you break this down for us. If you want to learn more about the Barian test, I would suggest you go to Vince's website, which is thebariantest.com. That is T H E B E R E A N T E S T, thebariantest.com, where you will find more about uh, other songs that he is actually reviewed which sounds like it looks like it's been hundreds of songs that you've been reviewing um a lot of them maybe songs you're familiar with that you hear on the radio or that you hear in your churches and he's gone through them and, and all the steps that he went through today with these three songs that he he's done with other songs so go ahead and look at that and learn from them he's also got articles in the c i want to say ccm magazine or cm and magazine, <laughs> Christian uh, Music Network magazine, where he lists, uh, again, he just puts those uh, reviews out there. So definitely check him out. Um, and Vince, thank you so much that we were able to have this conversation. I think it was absolutely thrilling. I wouldn't be surprised if there are people that are going to be calling and saying, we want to talk to Vince again, <laughs> you know, kind of idea. <laughs> um, now, the other thing I thought that was exciting uh, on Vince's website is he actually takes requests. So do you still do that? You take requests of particular songs and, and actually do reviews on them? I do. Uh, in fact, requests is pretty much what drives the boat at this point. Initially, when I had started, uh, it was more of a me looking at the top 10 list, and I was I was more of a deconstructionist, looking at thinking about all the bad that's in Christian music because I had this idea that Christian music has gone really astray. It's gone way off the it's rocker, and, and I, need to, I need to talk all the bad that was in it. And there might be some good things, and I'll talk about that too. Um, so that's how okay. I started. Uh, but I don't, I don't really do that anymore. Um, it's because part, well, part of it is because most of the reviews I've done are rated eight or higher, which, um, which is great, which means that we're actually in a good direction when it comes to, um, Christian music in terms of the lyrics. Um, so I'm really happy to, uh, that that's happening. I, 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 I would like to see a little bit more milk or excuse me, a little bit more meat in the, uh, in the songs that we're putting out there. Um, but I can understand why artists would, um, would, would want to, uh, stick with the milk because one, it sells and two, because it's really relevant to people. Um, so, um, having said that, um, I'm sorry, what was your question again? <laughs> I went to a whole bunch of other Are you things. still accepting? Are you still accepting? Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Request for reviews. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I yeah. I went completely went uh, left field. Went on a tangent. Um. Yeah. So, so as I was saying, um, the uh, song request is pretty much what drives the boat now. Uh, I I will accept requests up to 24 in the queue. Uh, and once there's 24 in the queue, I'm gonna I'm gonna shut it off for a couple of weeks. Wait till uh, because what I do with the the songs is I'll I'll put them in a poll, and uh, you can vote for up to three songs that you would want. In, in, in whatever the poll was out there. Uh, and the top two get selected. Those are the ones I review mm -hmm. next. Uh, they come out of the queue, the next eight come in. So you get the idea. Uh, and then once, oh, okay. once, it, once it's come down a little bit, then I could, I could reopen it up. Uh, so yeah, I, I accept, I accept on request. I also accept songs that are written specifically by artists. They can request a review. Um, and okay. usually I, I will, I will do that. Um, I will I will review that song. Uh, the other thing that I'll accept is is comments and feedback. Comments and feedback is really really important to me because it helps me to become a better brand, uh, a much a much better reviewer. Mm -hmm. And there's been a lot of occasions where I've been given a comment, I've thought about it, and and then I said to myself, self, that person has a point. So what mm -hmm. I'll do is I'll change the review, which is something that a lot of not a whole lot of people do when it comes to review sites. They don't they don't go back and they um, change their uh, evaluation analysis, but I will right. um, because I think it's important for me to put out accurate information uh, and what my current thinking is when it comes to um, lyrical examination. So, um, and the best way for me to do that is to update my reviews um, and to put the right. the new score um, 
why I, why I changed my score um, in, in history. Uh, so, yeah, song, songs, uh, I'll accept, but I also accept feedback as well. Awesome. Awesome. Now, a question that I, I think is going to pop up is, again, we're talking to songwriters and that may, that may or may not have popular songs right now, or the, I don't know, they may have recorded songs. Uh, they may just have lyrics. And what if they said, you know, I have these lyrics, but I really want that Vince guy to kind of look at my lyrics and tell me if I'm on the right track. Are you open to that kind of thing? And this, this is based on songs that may be written, but not necessarily published. Um, what What's your thought on that? Would you accept that? Or do you prefer they be published and out there? Uh, no, I, I'm, I'd be happy to share my thoughts uh, about other people's songs. I've done it in the past and I'm willing to do it again. Awesome. Awesome. Well, you've heard it. <laughs> if you are writing songs and you're concerned and you want your songs to be biblically accurate and to kind of hit 10 on all the Brian scale uh, with the Brian <laughs> test, then you can send your song to Vince. <laughs> Just go through his website. He has a contact me uh, section there. Just go through the website to contact Vince at thebrianetest.com and he'd be happy to give your feedback or give his feedback about your song and accept your feedback as well. Vince, again, awesome to have you on here and we'd love to have you back again at some point in time. And thank you so much for taking the time and I wanna thank you viewers for taking the time to watch this. Please, if you have any comments, questions, please put them down uh, underneath this video, uh, whether you're watching in Facebook or on on uh, YouTube. Definitely send us comments about this. And again, uh, if you like what you're seeing, like, subscribe, and hit that, that notification bell so that the next time we go live with a, with a program, you will be notified and we'll be able to watch it right then and there as well. Please feel to go to our website, gmihub.ca, so that you can know about the different things that we are doing to help support and encourage and strengthen the music industry, especially for gospel artists and Christian artists that are out there. Um, do be aware that we run projects that are uh, our compilation type projects where we help artists through the process of taking their song from its creative form, the writing form, right up to getting it released. We want to help you in that area. We help you with marketing, etc. cetera. Um, we also do artist showcases. So please check out our website to know when all those uh, different types of events and opportunities are happening. You can also follow us on our, on our social medias, which you're seeing across the bottom there. We are on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, and TikTok at GMI Hub or with Twitter in this case uh, at Industry Gospel where you can follow us and I guess interact with, uh, interact with us on social media. Well, it's been an absolute blast having you with us and having Vince with us and we thank you for being here and we want to check you, we want you to check us out for next time when we're back here on GMI Hub Online. Bye for now. GMI Hub is accepting new songs for their 2023 Christmas compilation. To find out how to submit your song, go to www.gmihub.ca today. GMI Hub Family Christmas Volume 4. is the time to submit your original Christmas song. The Who Is You. If you're a songwriter and would love to be a part of our Christmas compilation project, then you're in the right place. Where can you submit? GMIHub.ca is the place. 
please visit our website at gmihub.ca and click on Family Christmas to find out how you can submit your song today. You could be a part of the GMI Hub Family Christmas Volume 4.